In this video, I'm going to give you the list of the worst, most dangerous foods you can eat if you have hypothyroidism and low thyroid. And I'm going to explain why they're so dangerous. And just so you know, this is a lot of foods we're going to be talking about. So this is part one, and we're talking specifically about T4 in this video. Now, why would we even be talking about foods as, as it relates to your thyroid function? I know a lot of doctors you could see, a lot of endocrinologists will tell you that what you eat has nothing to do with your thyroid. And some people will tell you that things that are called goitrogens are really bad for your thyroid. And, and really, that's not very true either, because most people would never eat those foods in a large enough amount for it to be a problem. What we're talking about in this video is some research that came out a few years ago, and I'll give you the reference in the description of the video about cross-reaction. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that cross-reaction is a very big, very real thing that can happen. Cross-reaction occurs when the antibodies for one thing stick on to another thing. Now, antibodies are just like, I held up my post-it notes, uh, antibodies are just like little post-it notes that your immune system makes to stick on to something. And when the antibodies for thing A can stick to thing B, that's called cross-reaction, and that is exactly what we're talking about in this video. Uh, I've known for a long time, for 20 years, and you can also read some research on this, that people that have you know, either Hashimoto's or, or even non-Hashimoto's hypothyroidism can often have you know, food reactions and can sometimes uh, not get the benefit of the hormones you're taking, and I've made some videos on that. Now, one of the mechanisms behind taking levothyroxine or Synthroid and not feeling any better could be that you're eating foods that you are reactive to that are causing a problem with T4. So what it means is this, in hypothyroidism, uh, you're not making enough hormones, right? Uh, usually you're not making enough T4, and the most common cause of that is, Hashim is Hashimoto's, and of course, like I mentioned, I've got a million videos on that. Um, your TH, le TH levels go up, your T4 goes down, and you become hypothyroid. Then you develop a lot of hypothyroid symptoms like hair loss, uh, weight gain, sleep problems, brain fog, anxiety, depression, uh, constipation, all sorts of problems like that. And you get given uh, T4, which is levothyroxine or Synthroid. But if you are developing a problem with some of these foods we're going to go over, your immune system can be making you not get the benefit of the hormones that you're taking and could be making your hypothyroidism worse. Okay, So let's get to the list. Now, uh, just to kind of orient you, in the study, they rated these foods based on how cross-reactive they were. And I'm just going to give you the 3-plus and the 2-plus foods. 2-plus are medium cross-reactors, and 3-plus are high cross-reactors. Now, before you wonder, uh, you know, what do I do? Should I eliminate these? Just let me get through the list, and I'll cover all those questions for you. So let me bring the list up for you. So in the 2-plus level, these are the medium cross-reactors, we have the following. We have almonds. We have cooked Brussels sprouts, uh, raw and roasted macadamia nuts, oats, peanut butter, pistachios raw and roasted, and cooked zucchini. Now, let me just go ahead and go to the high foods now. The three plus, the highest cross-reactive foods as it, uh, with T4 are roasted almonds, Brazil nuts raw and roasted, cashews that are roasted, cashew vacillum, which is just a little chemical piece of cashews, uh, cooked clam, cooked egg yolks, gelatin, mustard seed, raw salmon, cooked scallops, seaweed, cooked shrimp, uh, gluten-free soy sauce, cooked squid, tofu, cooked tilapia, cooked and raw tuna. Now that's interesting, right? You see a theme. We've got nuts, we got seafood, right? Now, you may be saying, oh my God, I have to eliminate all those, right? He's saying I have to eliminate all those. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm also not saying go do an IgG food sensitivity test because that's not going to help you either. I'm Just a really quick word on those. Uh, those food sensitivity tests are not telling you what you think they're telling you. Uh, just because something is positive on that test doesn't mean it's causative. It doesn't mean it's a problem. Um, and I probably shouldn't get into that can of worms, but what I am saying is this, is that we now know that there's these foods that if you were to develop a problem with them, could become even a bigger problem with your thyroid. So how would you develop a problem with these foods? Well, your immune system is going to have to decide that it's going to make some antibodies against it. And why is that going to happen? Well, your immune system is lying all around your GI tract. And if you get a hyper leaky gut, for whatever reason, foods can pass through your GI, pass through your GI wall uh, that are either undigested or in a large, larger pieces than they're supposed to be. And that alarms your immune system and your immune system starts making antibodies to them. Now, what causes a hyper leaky gut? I can give you 50 reasons for that. You have everything from bacterial infections, candida, to vitamin D deficiency, uh, just having an autoimmune problem can do it. 
There's a bunch of reasons. So with this information, I'm not telling you to go out and eliminate all these foods from your diet because number one, you don't know how to do that. Uh, you don't know how long to do it, but there is a way to do it. There's a very kind of programmed uh, diet change you can make where you can find out if these things are a problem. But you're going to have to work with someone that knows what that is because I really can't in good conscience try to tell you how to DIY that because it just it wouldn't work. But you're also going to have to work with someone that understands, okay, maybe those foods are a problem, but if they are a problem, they're a problem because you developed a hyperleaky gut. So why is that happening, right? So keep in mind, the most common cause of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune problem. But there's millions of people that have uh, hypothyroidism that aren't autoimmune. Those people can still have this problem. So this was part one of our video on the worst, most dangerous foods if you have low thyroid and hypothyroidism. And the reason these foods are dangerous is because they can cross-react. Now, full disclosure, full caveat here, right? Just because we know they can cross-react doesn't mean they're going to cross-react. So you're going to have to work with someone to help you figure out the answers to that question. All right. So stick around. I'll post video uh, part two pretty soon in which we're going to cover the worst, most dangerous foods for thyroid function and hypothyroidism as it relates to T3. See you next time.